Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to our um, Mastering R number two event. So this is a more um, a tutorial than an event. So we are very happy to have you all here. So we expect a bit more, uh, some more people. Um, and so I leave the floor uh, my, uh, to our new um, co-organizer, Francesca Pigone. And she will introduce us, uh, our chapter and uh, what we are going to do today. Great, perfect. Thank you, Federica. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's really wonderful to see how many people are interested in uh, programming languages. And here you can find some disclaimer about this um, this workshop. So uh, obviously, as I as have you already read read, uh, this is recorded. So if you do not want to be recorded, you can turn off your cameras and uh, we want to have a safe environment here an inclusive space so uh, no harassment and be respectful of the environment please um, remember also to check out our code of conduct uh, herein you can find the, the link and also uh, use the chat for introducing yourself and ask questions um most probably the question will be at the end of the the lesson but you can also raise your hand whenever you need uh, some clear major clarification um this is just um a tip for uh, the ones who are ready in the uh, programming languages so uh, get inside your posit cloud account and the link was shared uh, uh, by Federica um, previously in the chat, um, and then uh, save the install the packages and load also the with the command library the the package that you will need uh, throughout the um, the lesson. So, as we have already said, and you well know because you uh, sign up for this course, we are here for the second part of the uh, uh, intensive crush for data enthusiasts. Uh, my name is Francesca Picone, and I recently joined the Air Ladies Rome uh, uh, organization. Uh, I am a um, statistician and an actuary. Um, I worked uh, in risk management and also in the energy uh, business. Together with Federica, uh, we are here for this course and uh, Federica will illustrate you and revisit, revisit the basic of uh, R, um, helping you through some concepts that uh, will be useful for sure in the, in the future for your activities. So um, probably most of you already know what is Air Ladies, also because this is the second chapter. So uh, you already attended the, the course in July. At any rate, uh, repetita juvent. Uh, Our Ladies is a global organization with uh, a mission that is promoting the R language and also trying to empower women uh, at all levels. Uh, this is a gender diversity friendly community that was founded uh, in uh, 2012 uh, by Gabriela de Queros in San Francisco. And Air Ladies in general is a worldwide organization with a lot of chapters and presence in 63 countries of the world with really so much events as you can see from this number also. Uh, what is this Air Ladies Rome? Is a local chapter of the Air Ladies Global as we already said before. And um, it was founded by Claudia Vitolo, that is also a co-founder of Air Ladies Global. The organizers, organizer of the chapter is uh, Federica Gazzelloni. Uh, I am one of the uh, co-organizers. And also with us uh, is working and co-organizing Katie Wood. But we are always open to new joiners. So if you want to 
contribute in, in any forms in any way please feel free to uh, chat with us uh, you can write uh, to us an email or, or uh, with uh, throughout really different social networks and afterwards i will also send through the chat some links um these are some of the events that we have done uh, during this year and many others that will come so uh, uh soon we will share infos about uh, october and then november and december events so as we said in july uh was done the first part of uh, this course we don't know if you attended here or maybe just uh, um see it on youtube and then wanted to to join the second part an important news is that our, our ladies is now a non-profit collective this means that we are formalizing our operation uh, we emphasize um, transparency and accountability uh, to our sponsor members donors and also general public um, anyway all the materials will uh, send out so you can review it uh, and have all the links to to see it more carefully i will leave the floor to federica thank you so hello everyone thank you very much francesca so i'm very happy that you join us uh, also, uh, we are also colleagues, uh, both statisticians and naturalists. So uh, this is a very uh, excellent uh, uh, partnership. I think. So uh, what we are going to uh, uh, do today is um, uh, a little bit of continuing what we did uh, last, last, on, in the previous course. But also we will be going back to basics and have a look at some um, things that we haven't um, looked at uh, last time. So we are all set and ready to begin. We will be using Posit Cloud. So again, this means you won't need to install anything. We can jump right into the coding. And I'll walk you through all the steps for using R, analyzing data, and eventually create a report. Because I believe that this is the best part of everything. So you, you do your analysis, and then you are able to share your results with your colleagues. Um, and this is a very important tool. So after this demonstration, you'll have the opportunity to continue uh, your data analysis, just as we did it together. So once the, co the course concludes, you receive an email, and this email will con uh, contain a brief assignment, just as the same as the, the same things that we did it during the session. Upon successful completion of the assignment and the submission of your report to Rome at ourladies.org, you will be awarded of a, with a certificate of successful completion of the art crash. From our ladies' room, so that that that's uh, is something that for you to um, uh, certify that you did uh, a step forward within your learning R. So let's dive right in and make the most of this hands-on R data analysis adventure. Okay, so as you can see, uh, hopefully everyone uh, is uh, inside um, POSIT cloud space. So if, uh, you, if you have any issues, please advise Francesca in the chat so we can help you out. Uh, as you can see, um, we have um, our uh, mastering R2 assignment. So what's happened when you, um, some of you are already inside, I cannot see your work, I cannot modify your work. I can just 
see that you join. Um, so inside the project, you will see um, some files. Uh, we have uh, an helper, 00helperfiles.r, an introduction, and then some data for carrying on our with our analysis. So we have data, images, and this is our project. So there are three more files, this uh, underscore extension and this Weber Weber. So I'll ask, I'm asking you to uh, don't play much, don't pay much, much attention on these three files. Uh, I'm going to show you. This is an extra feature that we, they just released. So I'm, I'm going to show you how it works. So any questions before uh, beforehand? Uh, any question you might have, uh, please put in the chat. Uh, raise your hand. We might it might be uh, useful to answer all the questions at the end of the um, of this course. So we take some minutes, and we might want to go back to where we were and see uh, what what happened. Okay, so this is uh, our introduction. Uh, I'd like to show you a few more things. Um, so this is a, a nice environment, and we have, uh, uh, this is our studio, okay? So we are inside the project. When you, uh, if you already have a, a version of R, uh, you might be able to, open up a new project. Now we are in Posit Cloud, so it's automatically uh, setting up a project for you. In fact, you find this file, project.rproject. Um, let, let's take all these things just as is, and let's dive in. So I think this is the best way to break the ice. Okay, so as you can see, this is our uh, .qmd file, which means Quarto Markdown file. And it is a compiler. It's a type of file that can be compiled uh, in a way that you can then uh, release a report. So in this case, it's a it type of uh, HMN file. So I've made this, uh, this file, as you can see, quite similar to the one that we did it in, in the previous uh course uh, what i wanted to show you if you click this uh, uh blue arrow here render i'm going to click it okay hopefully you can see um the this uh the outcome of, of this file okay you can see that we are now on a web page this is not published, so it's just local on your computer. You cannot share it with others. Um, but uh, then uh, there are some ways for you to be able to share it. So this is our uh, compiled file that you can uh, share. You might want to have, uh, instead of a HTML file, a PDF, for example. So this way you just change the format and then click render. As you can see, uh, some files, uh, the, the, the compilation procedure um, releases some files, and then finally, they would be like undetached, uh, and just a, a .pdf file is, is released, which is this one here. Okay, so you basically have uh, your report done, uh, on a PDF file, so which is nice, okay, to share uh, the result of your analysis. But now we want to do some analysis with that, okay? So this is uh, what I uh, uh, like to. Okay, I need to put this back as it as HTML. I render this again. Okay, so now uh, this is the uh, the extra files 
that you can see this is uh, what's happening uh, in in here and I, i'll show you uh, later okay i like you uh to do some um uh, uh answering some questions so can you please uh, uh dive uh into uh slido.com please um i'll put the link here and then uh use this code um i crash okay or you might want to use a qr code maybe is it that uh, if if that's easier Are you okay? Yeah. So I'm going to um, close this this pool. Okay. So we have. Um, uh some people that it has, has some experience we have experts uh and someone that's starting from from the very um the very beginning which is good okay we do a bit of everything uh and so I have nine people, uh, 10, thank you. So I'm going to close this pool. Um, beginners levels and some middle levels. So we know how to, uh, you know, be, relax and see um what's gonna happen next so hope you um um already and set up your cloud um please make sure to have the tidyverse package if you have any issues please advise ask in the chat okay so um, what's happened um we know, okay, as we are some experts, we have some knowledge, we know that R serves as both a programming language and a statistical development environment. So extensively it is employed for tasks involving data analysis, visualization, and statistical modeling. This, um, it's an open source language that boosts an extensive array of function and specialized packages tailored for data processing and statistical application. Okay, so as you can see, uh, this new feature uh, is just been uh, like taking uh, place. Uh, and uh, this is the Weber uh, files that I've just mentioned. So this status is ready. It, it is just an extension of a quarter file. So as you can see, it allows me on a compiled file to run some code. Uh, and this is R, okay, just as the same as we can see here. So if we, this is Weber, so to make this work, uh, this is a bit advanced topic. Um, I mentioned for uh, the experts, so you might want to add filters, and then Weber in your, this is a, in a, on a quarter markdown file, it's the header of the file. And it's a type of language uh, which is recognized by these three dots uh, on the top of the bottom of the uh, header content. Uh, and this is called YAML. It's a, a sort of um, different language that it's uh, basically allowed the compiler to understand um option that will affect the word page okay 
So if uh, this um, uh, web can be uh, specified here this way with the web um, R, and then you can, um, it, it's just a, a chunk of code that you can use. In fact, in my compile, uh, I wanted to, to use this uh, chunk of code to um, talk about R outside the library boxes. Okay, so R uh, provides many packages, but we can uh, use base R for doing things. Okay, and so base R uh, allows you to have uh, the function that you can customize, make your function, or use function, customize function within packages. For example, the uh, this this sum function, okay, it's a it's a function. Uh, it within the base R. How can I can I do this? If I add to my helper file, this is a very basic. Uh, just as I mentioned, this is a um, uh, a script. The name is good. Uh, it's a file dot r. You find you can um, find all the files here. In the meantime, I introduce you within the part of of um, the R Studio environment. And so, to create an R script, you can just uh, go here and create a file. So I use this um, helper for me to to show you what. Uh, is this um, if I type a question mark and then the function and then command enter uh, in Mac or control enter in Windows, it al allows me to to read to find some help. Can you see in the the pane on the right, the bottom pane on the right? These are the, this environment is divided within. Um, Windows, okay. So you have four uh, windows within this thing, and they are generally called pane. And you can customize them in here in, within the global option. You you might have uh, you might you know want to have a look at this uh, environment by yourself and look at all the things that are inside and customize just as as a new uh, iPhone. So you find all the option and all the things. So this uh, question mark some uh, function allows me to read some help. And this function is from the base R, okay? It is not a package, so it is base R. So uh, the function provided with base R, uh, so-called the, the function outside of the library boxes. And so uh, it's, it's a sum, uh, it's a function that summarizes some values, okay? And so here I have, it, it, more specifically, it's a generic function for this reason, uh, which has a method defined uh, for summarizing values, okay? And here you can see that if, if I uh, do some one, two, five, okay? So I can sum this number. So in my compile, uh, function. If I, oops, in my compile chunk of code, if I can do like sum and then one to five, and then um, let's take this off for a second, and then run the code, and I receive a result. So as you can see. This is R. R can be used just as a um, uh, calculator. Um, so these are certain type of number. I can assign this this uh, sum to a total. This way, I am I'm assigning the result of this um, function to a variable named tot, for example. Okay. If I run this piece of code, I do not have any result. But then if I type tot, uh, this, this, val this variable, which is this variable, contains some value. If I want to see what is this, what is it, this variable, I can do class. If 
but it doesn't recognize the pipe because I cannot, I, I don't um, have a library in it, okay? So if I do class dot this way, it says that my variable as a class, so what type of class is it? It's an integer. Okay, so um, this is what happened with R, all the things that you can do with R, but you can do, oops, you can do much more. So you can do your own functions. Uh, and so this is the, basically what's happened within packages and then loading packages within library. So you, your function, uh, it's, um, is this. So you can uh, call it, for example, my function, then I have um, this function, and some some things inside the bracket of the function. In this case, I've put sum of x. Okay, then I assign to x some values from one to 15, and then I call my function. If I, with x, if I run this code, what's happened here, that um, my function releases the sum of x. Okay, I can make, more complicated function. Uh, this is uh, generally called a wrapper function, this type of function, because I'm wrapping up um, a generic function uh, to make it um, easier to, to use under some, some conditions. So these are the potentiality of R. So many things you, that you can do. Okay, so uh, R stands out as a favorite choice among statisticians, uh, data anal analysts, and data scientists, particularly in the domain of data processing, analysis, and statistical modeling. It is equipped with an extensive array of statistical functions, data manipulation and visualization tools, and it emerges as a versatile companion for delving into data and constructing intricate models. So you can do much more, okay? These are the, 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 the starting point. What we are going to, to do today is basically, we are now just venture out of the library boxes, and so beyond the basic of R. Now it's time to dive into the world of the tidyverse syntax. The tidyverse is a meta package, so it's a um, more than one package. Uh, it's a collection of packages which serves wrap functions and extra functions um, to, to the base R function for you to manipulate your data easily. So we'll use this to manipulate data sets and, and explore, we also explore the first line modeling steps we done. So what is the cycle of analysis? So we have uh, um, some, some steps that we need to follow when, when we do data analysis. First thing is data collection, cleaning, and pre-processing. This is, um, I think, a very important part. When your data is ready, so you have your data, you cleaned your data, you made some pre-processing, feature engineering means uh, manipulating um, your data. Then you start analyzing and making some statistics, for example. Then you can apply some modeling, and then if you need some forecasting, so you can predict something. So with a good understanding of these concepts, you can delve into the more advanced capabilities of R tailored to your particular requirements. I also suggest you use help start if you need any help because you find some, some help or put a question mark before your function if you want to see what is it, if there's any example, how to use it. Also, you can also use a Google search engine and just type what you're searching for ending with in R or using R or in, in within the R language. You can use this Stack Overflow website 
and also the R for the S online community lab. You can open, uh, you can find us easily. Okay, hope you are all good. Uh, I don't see anything in the chat, so I can go forward to the second part of our um, uh, uh, course, Introduction of R. As you can see, uh, after we compiled, some, some extra files remain, but I can safely um, delete them. I don't need it. Anytime I will compile the files again, they will be re reproduced. And these are the, the, the my, the, there is a reason for this, but you, for now, we, we, this is not, so we are going to see this next, on the next course. So we are now adding towards um, analyzing some analyzing. So having a look at how to analyze some data, in particular insurance data this time. So let's have a look at this, um, this file. We can even compile it. Um, it will do the same thing as before. You might want to have a HMS file or a PDF, you can do that. But for now, let, let's go through this, uh, this, this, this file, okay? We are going to explore data from the insurance in industry. So th there's um, many data. Let, let's uh, pause for a minute here and go back to the helper file. This, uh, this might surprise you, okay, or might not, but you you want to do some practice analyzing data and everything and you don't know you don't have data okay how can you do you can do okay last time we have we had a look at tidy tuesdays data okay if you type tidy tuesdays and you go on twitter or x whatever it's called now um um we have some uh links on the previous course that you find in post cloud but more interesting things that you have data in R. If you type data like this in the command enter, so it allows you to see the list of available data sets within R, okay? I have loaded the tidyverse, so I have already uh, some extra um, data sets, uh, but I can do more. If I do package equal dot packages all available true, and I do command enter, I have more data, even more data. So anything you can uh, just access this data by doing data and the name of the data. Okay, this is not exactly what um, what it is. Or uh, maybe I say. This is um, done. This is a classic type of data set, as you can see here. So this is Iris. And so you might want to see if you can access any of these uh, things that you, you might need a, the package. OK. So this is all I wanted to, to show you. For our data set within the insurance we use a library which is ca uh, cast dataset. Okay, I don't ask you to install the package, neither um, uh, run the library, because this data have already been set in the data folder. If you open up the data folder, you see that there are two type of files. Uh, you have uh, a dot CSV file and a dot .lda file. Two type of files, so we can see how, how to ac have access to them, to the data of this, these two type of data. So in uh, the world of data science, one crucial skill is playing with data. So this means that we take raw data, and for raw data, we mean the data that we receive or the data that we just find, uh, but they are not exactly what we want. So the very starting point of your data is generally 
named as a raw data, and then we can change it. So make it neat and tidy and throw away anything we don't need. So we do this uh, and then we can like have a, a better look of our good picture. In this case, insurance data by definition, okay, so we have, uh, this is a, just a mention from a book, which I'll put in uh, uh, later on within the material of this course. She says, by definition, large claims are scarce. Okay, so not, not many. So uh, as they live in detail of the distribution function, and those correspond to rare events. So this is just, just a little uh, quotation, quote, okay? Just to say, to say, to say that you might have some data, but the purpose of your analysis is very important. So you need to adjust, modify, manipulate your data in a way that you can um, reach your purpose. So in this case, we need aggregation. And this is what we are going to see. A different procedure might be taken when analyzing health, health data. So this will be explored in the following course. So let's load the library, Tidyverse. You just click here. You find this, this file within your project. So um, we already talked about this. Um, um, it, it's, um, it's very useful to be able to have some data ready to do some practice. So let's dive it into our folder and we find two type of data. Uh, how can we access it? So the first type is the severity.csv. It's a type of CSV, it's a delimited type of file and um, it's more specifically a common separated values type of file. The second file it's a claims.rda, and this is a container. It's a digital storage container for your R data uh, and objects. It makes easier to save, organize, and reduce your working app. As you can see, you might you might want to to see it's um uh, this case is quite large. It's seven point five megabytes. Okay, but this is a very large data set. Okay, so let's let's see how we can access to it. So we can access to the severity file by using the function read CSV. Um, I like to show you if I do question mark control uh, and and then command enter. I can see that this is um um part of um, a set of functions from the reader package and uh, they allowed you this set of functions because it the model one read the lim read the uh, csv read csv2 uh, read csv and so on so they are a set of functions that allow you allow you to read the limited type of files. Okay, in this case, we have a dot um, CSV, so we use read the CSV. If we control enter um, this um, um, command, we see that we have our the uh, data in the environment. Okay, let's. Uh, uh, if I want to clean up my environment, okay, I can um, I can do this uh, by restarting R. For example, if I go to session and then restart, uh, it cleans up my environment. Or I can type remove. For example, if I do remove uh, Iris and then click enter. In this case, in the console, I can just use um, our command without seeing them, uh, without doing control enter. I can just click enter. 
And so my Irish data set is not uh, in my environment anymore. Okay, this is um, more tips that uh, coming on through the, the, the course. So this is our severity, uh, and it, it is now here. I can have a look at it by clicking uh, um, a table on a side and see that, that we have the ID of the policy. policy. So these are insurance policies. Uh, and these are the claim amounts, okay? So uh, this is uh, uh, one type of file. And then the other one, it's a different type of file because it is a dot LDA file. So I can access this type of container is just by loading. I do load the file. And so loading the file, I find the file within the environment. Let's let's remove the claims from the environment and then load it back again. And so I have the claims here. I can have a look at it. Uh, and here again, uh, a bit of connection with the severity. I have the ID of the policy the claim numbers, the exposure, and so some like age, the drive age, bonus miles, um, the type of gas, the area. This is a data set um, of uh, motor uh, claims, the motor insurance claims uh, within the region of France. So uh, uh, as you can see, there is a list of uh, regions in France. Okay, just to have a look, it's an mm, uh, interesting data set. So let's have a look at this. Uh, so now we had a look at the severity and the claim set by looking at them on the environment table. Okay, so I can have a look at them by uh, piping them. This is the uh, a tie diverse. Um, it's worth to mention something, uh, one more thing. So, this is the tie diverse pipe. So, the, the tie diverse, as I said, as I said it's a, a meta package, so contains small packages. But the tie diverse is also a syntax. So, within base R, you have to, you have to have to do head, uh, oops. Severity. Oops. To uh, be able to see the um, let's go to source. Okay, so I can do source and visual. If I go to source, I have the structure um, of my uh, file. If I go to visual. Uh, my file is partially compiled, okay? So it's basically, you can uh, customize it a bit. So I go back to source, and so see that, um, so my uh, in base R uh, syntax, if I want to ever look at this very, uh, a bit of the, the very like, first six uh, observation of my data, uh, I would need to do this. Instead, with the tidyverse, I use the pipe, and then I can pipe down more than one function, one after the other. For example, if I do like select, just claim amount, okay? I can have a look at the add, of the severity, okay, and then I can continue to do the things uh, such as this one here. Uh, instead, with base R, uh, I, I I would need to assign this to, or maybe do this okay, amount or like the second column like this. So. It's a different structure um, 
of uh, like way to manipulate data. Um, and so this is what I wanted to, to show you. So for now we are going uh, on uh, carry on our analysis using the types of the tidy event. So as well as uh, the, we have seen the severity, um, our severity data set, and the claims, it's a bit more populated. And uh, manipulating data, so what that is transforming, organizing, and cleaning. So it, it, it's very important to understand the, the type of data we are dealing with as a first step and then transform it as required. So the, the data structure is the first uh, things that let us understand what's inside our data, what type of data we've got. If I use this function SDR, um, I can do this or, or not. Um, there is also uh, just uh, within, uh, let's pause a minute and say that there is also a different pipe, which is already, it, it is now being um, released very recently. And this is uh, within base R, okay? You can, you don't need to load any package. You can, you are allowed to do this uh, uh, with base R. Uh, but this, this uh, pipe doesn't allow you to do this. So you, you need to specify the function within the bracket. Okay, so this is um, something else, a, a pipe, type of pipe within base R without the need to installing uh, the tidyx, but then you're still missing some verbs, some, some very useful functions uh, provided by the tidyx. And so let's have a look at the, the structure of our data and to have a look at the structure, we can use the str function. It's a structure. So let us know the structure of the data. As you can see, we have number type of, so the, the two uh, vectors that we got are type of numbers, or we can use glimpse as a function. It's uh, basically the same. If I don't, uh, if I do this, or I do this, it's actually the same. Uh, and here, it glimpse, with glimpse, uh, you are allowed to, to see what type of numbers. It's a double, it's an integer that you are using. But if we uh, look at the claims, which is a, a larger data set, we have 678,000 observations and 12 columns. We have different type of data. We have double. We have an interesting table of one dimension. So inside the table, there is a table. Uh, we have double, integers, characters, and factors. So um, all these specifications, uh, um, you will understand them by practicing. Um, so we, we the first challenge basically is to deal with data that need manipulation before to be plugged into a model specification. And so we make some adjustments to our data using the tidyverse meta package, which provides very useful functions and uh, they are called verbs. Okay, so we have the select, filter, mutate, and arrange just to mention a few uh, for manipulating data. We have other type of syntax to use for grouping and summarizing data. We have, we can use group by, so we can group our data and then uh, summarize the results of our grouping or reframe, which is um, an, an, um, an updated version of summarize and uh, so it's worth to mention um, when we are within the day, practicing within the data. Also, there are other very often used uh, function for pivoting, such as making your data longer and you use pivot longer, or your data wider and you use pivot wider. Then finally, 
worth to mention are the joint functions. And so those functions uh, are the function that lets you combine more than one set together. So they, we have the inner join, pull join, right join, left join, anti join. So they are all function that basically combine more than one set together. So let's go back to our data. Um, we have our claims data set, which is quite huge data set. And it doesn't, if you notice, this contain a table inside a table. So that, that was basically uh, most probably extrapolated within another software environment. And so you might find data that are so-called dirty data. Okay, so you need to do a bit of like adjustments to this data. And so this uh, is a table, uh, it's a word to, uh, you know, understand this a bit more uh, if we had more time. And so for now, we select it off. So we don't, we, we take it off from our data. And then what we do is we use the mutate function. The mutate function, what does it's mutating your data set, okay? Allowing you to create new vectors or make a modification to your vector. In this case, my uh, vehicle gas, which is uh, this one here, was a character. So now I need it to be a factor. So I use this uh, uh, as dot factor function. I, I, I don't understand what this function does. Then I do just this question mark as factor common enter and in the help section I find, I find that this is a a factor question and it's a base R function. Okay, if I go to factor, because you can use factor or as factor or is factor, it depends by what are you using? Okay, you can assign it to be a factor or transform it to be a factor or ask whether it is a factor or not. So, and this is applies to, uh, to be a character, to be a number, to be a double, to be an integer. So it is a, a type of language which is quite straightforward, easy to use. Uh, and so we now have a new, if I run this bit, I don't see anything because it is assigned to something uh, named now that, and I cannot see. But there are two ways to, to see. If I wrap this chunk of code within the bracket and run it again, it spit out the output or I can use the dot uh, type, just dot the object, and so it release the output. What I do usually do is always use the add to avoid uh, longer uh, when I when when this will be compiled. All the data sets. Uh, you know, take uh, will be shown within the page. So it's better for you to use the end so it shows the very top of the data or you can use the tail to show the bottom part of the data. Okay, you can even modify and say I want 20, the last uh, 20 observations and so it's better if you do like 10. And so this is uh, our first use of two verbs, select and mutate, but we can do more. For example, we can arrange, okay, we can mutate. So we, we just take it off the claim number because it was a table, but now we put it back by assigning to one. So basically 
practice severity um, uh, this is the severity uh, data set and so we create a claim number uh, equal to one so each ID policy has a uh, claim number equal to one so this way if we select this and do control enter we can see that we have created a new vector so called vector or column of, uh, with uh, all one then we can arrange it by uh, the id of the policy and this is um, arranged by um, uh, ascending order but we can do it by descending order. It depends by, so in this case, it's a double, so I can just put the minus, uh, and it will do on the other way. If it was a character, I would have to use a function, which is this dash function. I, I will need to wrap my vector within this function, descending, descending. But anyway, um, so this is our uh, where where um, we are where are we now where we are now okay at this at this point. So we are ordered uh, by the policy. We have a claim amount. We have created a new vector. Now what I want to do is basically grouping grouping by ID po uh, policy and summarize so basically uh, aggregate okay this claim amount by summing them uh, up when uh, there is more than one claim within one policy okay in order to do that what i do is uh, a group by id policy and then i use this function reframe or summarize Basically, the difference between reframe and summarize and summarize is that summarize uh, leave, leaves the um, data, group it by the vector, the, the, by the vector that we ask to be grouped by. Instead, reframe, just put everything uh, as it was before by uh, beside the fact that we have made some modifications. Okay, so the, da the data now is already ungrouped. Okay, because we group by a certain type of uh, uh, variable. And then if we create a new, um, I show you what I mean. And I use this uh, uh, same thing. So this is what's happened. So group by and then summarize. As you can see, um, then I do the same thing with. Without. Um, yeah. Without uh, summarize, but I do uh, reframe. Okay. And so as you can see, the, the same thing, exactly the same thing, nothing changes, but, oops, but uh, the um, summarized version is still grouped by ID policy while the reframe version, it is not, okay? What this means, uh, it's a bit of like advanced part uh, of this, uh, the art, you, the, of art, but if you uh, basically uh, keep going forward uh, with using art and practicing, you understand this very, very well. So these are, this is our new data. What we basically did it is to create a new column 
uh, name claim total, and then the claim number are now summarized. So if I run this and have a look at Sev, my new object, and, uh, I have new data, but now the claim claims are total as well as the claim number. If I want to see, for example, uh, if there's any differences, so that more than one, I, I already can see that this uh, ID policy 424 has uh, two claims, and this is uh, aggreg an aggregated value. But I can even use like a function name count. Oops. Count. If I use count and this claim number, I'm able to see that the majority have just uh, of ID policies have just one claim, but there's some others which have uh, like uh, like there is just one that has sixteen claims. Okay, so many things can be done. We can uh, add one more vector with the proportion. With this is count as a sort of table function. Again, if I want to see what is the function does, I do count. I can do here uh, in the console and click enter. So it open up. It's a function from the dplyr package. The dplyr package is within the tidyverse. So you might want to add over uh, the tidyverse.org to have a more specific understanding of the uh, meta package and all the different packages. So let's go um, forward. If you have any questions, please put in the chat. And so we now have this um, this condition. Okay, so this is what uh, we have seen before. We don't need it. Okay, we can now, uh, as we have a bit of like mixed up the things, but we started with a severity set and a claims. Oops. and the claims uh, data set. We made a bit of uh, modifications. So we have now a sev and a dat uh, data set. So the dat is this one here, where we modify um, the gas, uh, the brand, and the uh, so to be a factor, what we did it was uh, uh, the gas to be a factor, and so we have that data set, and then uh, we have a sev new sev data set where uh, policies are grouped, and we have claims for them. So we now combine the two data sets, the dat and the sev, by using the inner join function. Okay, so as you can see, both data sets have the ID poll vector in common. So we can uh, like use this um, inner join function to merge the two sets by ID policy. And so if I do this, enter, we now have the two sets and the, the second one is at the very bottom here. So, so, the, so we have now a new data set. We want to filter by all the claims lower and equal than five. And then we want to create a new variable. Okay, this is a, a bit of like, okay, it's it's a, one of the million thousand, you know, uh, way to analyze data. Analyzing data means uh, thinking about your purpose. What, what is your purpose? What 
are you going to do? Okay, so in this case, um, the exposure is basically how the number, the time. And um, we we use this nice function, which is pmin. Okay, we're assigning a value, one. And this is um, basically assigning one to all values greater than one. So we have a, a exposure within years. Okay. Um, and so we can assign, um, we have all fractions of one year and all that is equal or above one would be counted as one year, okay? And so we can arrange the exposure and assign the brand uh, to be a factor and in this case, assign a level. It seems like um, easy, complicated. Um, the best way is to dirty your hands and start doing these things uh, using um, function, just as uh, the same as the, 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 the names, it's just um, something that you might uh, call it with. Okay, so you want to arrange, you use the arrange, you want to mutate, the data set is mutate, you want to select, filter. And so we now have a new data, and let's have a look at this data. And this data is now 24,938 observations and 13 variables. We have some numbers, integers, factors, okay, not characters. All the fa all the characters are now factors. Um, and so the exposure uh, is that that thing that measures the duration of an insurance policy in yearly units. So what we want to see is with a visualization. It's a very important part. Now that we have our data. We want to do like a bit of exploratory data analysis, which is very important. We want to visualize this data, what is what is happening. And we are interested in this uh, exposure uh, thing. So we use a ggplot as we did the last time, a grammar of graphics for making a visualization. Uh, opening up a visualization with the ggplot function and then using an histogram, okay? And so we can see that the exposure is um, as a, as a bit skewed uh, distribution. And so this is a bit more statistical specific. But so we can visualize uh, those things. What's happened next that we can even do um, a different visualization like Considering, for example, the driving age. So we can uh, use the driving age on the x axis, the exposure in the y axis. And so we can see that this um, uh, is nice to, uh, would be worth it to investigate a bit more. And so um, what we do next, it's uh, one more uh visualization okay and we to obtain this we we need to group by age and then reframe it creating a new vector um exposure and where we sum all the uh, exposure values and then we plot it so as you can see we have a nice uh, line, the distribution line. We can uh, even use it for uh, comparing with our prediction. Okay, so this is our, uh, basically what we did it is, uh, if we ever look at the outline, we have manipulating, been, we have been manipulating data 
and we did some exploratory data analysis. We have some like bit of time for introducing data modeling. Okay, so modeling means uh, um, that I, I like to, for example, um, re with different data, I ask myself, with different data, will this um, be the same? Will this uh, cure be the same or different under different conditions? And so there's many um, type of models that can be used. Let's talk about linear regression, for example, okay? A way to um, like say that, I, I can like write latex on, on a quarter markdown. So I can write mathematical formula. If I want to see like um, write a formula, I say that my my model, so this is my response variable, what I like to predict or analyze. And uh, this would be the result of a combination of, of values, okay? So this would be like beta time x, okay? Mm, modeling, uh, so let's say that a modeling function uh, that would be, would be written like this, okay? And then I might have some error. Okay, so these x are my predictors. This y is my response variable. What this means? This is the error, okay? So what I'm going to do is, this, are, this is my data, okay? My claims data. I like to uh, have a look at the exposure. So predict or analyze. So predict the exposure. So the exposure in this case will be my y, but, um, and the base on the, total claims values. So my X will be my claims total. So this function linear model, what does is basically replicating this uh, equation um, here, uh, releasing this beta zero and beta one, which are the coefficients for reaching the most uh, closer uh, result to our starting point. Not sure if that's uh, clear, but you know, this is just a little introduction to modeling. So I used a linear regression. Uh, if I um, run with this function, LM, I can even see within the console question mark, uh, question mark LM. I can see that this is from the stats package and it's fitting uh, linear models. And so I can provide the formula, data, and do some things. So you have all the information here. And so if I run this, I have now a fit object. And if I use the summary function, I can see the result, okay? And so these are, I have the residuals, I have the coefficients. So in this case, the total uh, claims, uh, it's a negative number. So, and they are uh, all both, stati both statistically significant. So you have the adjusted as square uh, and the, the F statistics and, and the residual. Uh, okay, so this is a very little introduction that much more to see. So we have a negative value. So this is basically influencing negatively any unit average, on average, any unit change of the exposure. 
uh, will um, uh, basically um, uh, it, uh, it's um, uh, decreasing um, uh, the decline. Uh, then finally, if I uh, let let's say that we have a look at this in more details on the next course, and then uh, I'd like to show you just a, a little a, a, the um, the end of this uh, uh, course by using the predict function, and so if I use the predict function on feet uh, and run these things, so it releases bunch of numbers, okay? And these are basically the uh, predictions, so the estimation of possible new exposure values. Uh, but what if I want to combine them with my data? I can use um, another package, which is not, um, uh, I can use a package or I can use cbind, colon bind function, for example, assign the, the result of the, the content of predict pick to pred, assign any name you like. And so let's run this bit. We see, then I select just exposure and prediction. So this is, a, as I said, a yearly, um, the duration of an insurance policy in yearly units. So, uh, it released a prediction. Okay, so then now you can like make visualization, adjust, change model, uh, add, um, uh, predictors, uh, and everything. So this is uh, all I wanted to show you for for this course. And um, as you can see, this is our uh, project. And um, if we now compile, clicking on the blue arrow, we compile our uh, summary. The summary is released. Uh, you can even ask for uh, a PDF. And so you can share your results. You can obviously, this is a bit like um, for educational purposes, but you can adjust it and make it different. So now it's your turn.